Have you ever wondered what happens to your debts when you pass away? Do you wonder if those burdens fall on your loved ones or do they simply disappear? Imagine this, you're at a family gathering celebrating the life of a beloved relative who recently passed away and amidst the tears and the fond memories, an unexpected visitor arrives. Yeah, a debt collector demanding payment for the deceased outstanding loans. Maybe that sounds far-fetched. Well, it's more common than you might think. So today we're going to dive into the often overlooked topic of post-mortem debt. Yeah, like I said, death and taxes and how that can impact your loved ones. So stay tuned to find out some surprising truths and learn how to protect your family's financial future. Let's start by taking a look back at yesterday's show. Yesterday, I went back in the Stone Age, as some people told me in the comments, but I talked about nine reasons you should still write checks. So if you missed it, I want you to go back and give it a listen. And I, because I really uncovered some surprising benefits of this old school payment method that might just change the way you manage your finances. Now, all of our old episodes or our previous episodes, I mean, just yesterday, but they're all at askralph.com. Well, we got a great message from Blake and Blake wrote this. He said, Dear Ralph, my father recently passed away and we're discovering that he had quite a bit of debt we weren't even aware of. Creditors are calling us daily. We're not sure what to do. We have no idea the number of loans and credit cards that dad had. And to be honest, we're all feeling a bit overwhelmed trying to sort this out. Are we responsible for paying off his debts? How can we prevent this from happening to our own families in the future? Please help. Well, Blake, I want to start by saying thank you for your message. And my heart goes out to you during this difficult time. I lost my mother a year plus ago, and, and it's never easy to deal with those things, just the emotional side. But this is an incredibly important discussion we should have today, because I know many listeners are going to find themselves, if they haven't already, in a similar situation, and they're going to have similar concerns. So let me provide some clarity and guidance today. Well, I'm thrilled you've joined me today. Your trust and dedication mean the world to me, and I'm committed to providing you with the knowledge and tools you need to master your finances and grow in your faith. Now, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. If you're finding value in this show and our discussions, I want to encourage you to visit our website. That's at askralph.com. There you want, I want you to join our community. And if you find that this information is valuable, the best thing you can do is share this episode or share this show with others who might benefit from it. And as always, if you join our community, I'm going to give you a free copy of my book. It's called Mastering Your Finances. Now, like I said before, if you go on to Amazon and buy that, it will cost you 10 bucks. But it's my gift for you for being a part of our financial family. Now, let me remind you, this show is all about answering your questions. So keep them coming. You can email me at ralph at askralph.com or simply visit our website. That's askralph.com. You'll see a little microphone icon down at the bottom and just click record and, and tell me what's on your mind. Because the truth is, your question, just like this question today from Blake, they truly do shape our discussions and it allows us to all learn and grow together. Well, let's start by grounding ourselves in scripture and really looking at God's word. In the book of Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, it tells us this, a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. Now, this verse reminds us of the importance of responsible financial stewardship and how these impact our decisions, not just for us, but even for future generations. Well, now let's address Blake's question and explore exactly what happens to debts after you die. Now, it's not going to be your issue, but I'd hope you'd be interested in understanding how this impacts your loved ones. So I'm going to tell you a personal story about my cousin, Bruce. Now, Bruce was this guy, I mean, he was the life of the party. You always knew that Bruce was there because you would hear things popping off all around you. Bruce lived large. He loved deeply. And unfortunately, part of that came along with that is he spent freely. Now, Bruce, unfortunately, passed away at 45. Now, the family was devastated. But the shock of his loss, you know, that emotional thing was compounded by another surprise. And that was Bruce left a mountain of debt. As we all gathered for his funeral, there's the whispering started. It's kind of sad in a funeral, but everybody started talking about this because it was the thing that was on everybody's mind. Bruce had huge unpaid credit card bills. He had a second mortgage that nobody even knew about, not even his wife. And he had personal loans from friends and family. That's what people were whispering about. I guess I'm not going to get that money back from Bruce. So that grief at his funeral, that grief at his passing 
was completely overshadowed by this looming financial nightmare. His wife, Julie, she was blindsided. Julie had no idea the extent of their financial troubles. The problem is the creditors started calling. They started calling day and night. They demanded payment. Some even showed up at the house during the wake. I know you can't believe that, but it is the honest to God truth. It was a mess. And here's the problem. The situation created rifts in our family. Some relatives felt betrayed by Bruce's secret borrowing. Others were just angry at the creditors for their insensitivity. They couldn't believe that they were showing up at the wake. They couldn't believe they were harassing Julie. And here Julie's caught in the middle. She's overwhelmed with grief and she's got this fear about what's going to happen with my financial future. So as we navigated this challenging time, we learned some hard truths about postmortem debt. And so here's what you need to know. These are the things I want you to understand today. And I'm going to address this one right square up. Debts don't disappear when you die. That's just a fact. They don't just disappear. They become what's called a part of your estate. Now, in most cases, your heirs aren't personally responsible for the debts unless they co-signed on the loan or they're a joint account holder. So if they're a co-signer, well, guess what? It's what they call joint and severally liable. They're going to be liable just like you were. Or if they're joint on the account. Another thing you need to understand, creditors have a right to be paid from the estate before any other assets are distributed to anybody and to any of the heirs. That's just a fact. So if you're doing one of these, if you're in one of these situations, you got to realize that the creditors had the right to be paid from that money in the estate. Now, in most cases, this is going to be the truth. If the estate doesn't have enough assets to cover the debt, and I'm going to say in most cases, because everybody's situation is different, the debts just go unpaid. Now, creditors usually can't come after your heir's personal assets. So if your father passes away and he doesn't have any assets left, they can't just go after the children's assets unless they co-sign for it or they were somehow connected to the account. But I want to tell you, there are exceptions. And I'm not an attorney. And I can't give you legal advice, but there are exceptions, especially in community property states where a surviving spouse might be responsible for certain debts. So if that's your situation, you want to get some good legal advice right away. Now, the other thing you need to understand is some assets like life insurance proceeds and retirement accounts with named beneficiaries, they pass outside of the estate completely. So they're protected from creditors. So you might be saying, Ralph, oh, I just you just told me something I should know. That's right. So if you've got life insurance proceeds or a retirement account, each of which have named beneficiaries, those things can generally, and again, I'm not an attorney, they generally can't be touched by any creditors. So let's talk about Bruce's case. In Bruce's case, Julie had to sell his car. She had to liquidate his retirement accounts, his investments. She had to pay off some of the debts with the money she got. Now, the good news is Julie was able to keep their home but unfortunately, because that home had that second mortgage on it, Julie had to refinance it and pay it off and get a new mortgage. And it was a long, I'm telling you, it was a long, it was a stressful process. And it took Julie about a year to resolve it. And let me tell you right now, this experience was a wake up call for our entire family. It made a lot of us realize the importance of open financial communication and proper estate planning. A lot of people don't think about that until you're faced with that situation head on. And listen, it's not just about protecting our assets. It's about protecting our loved ones from that unnecessary stress, that stress that Julie went through and that hardship. It was already hard enough losing her husband. Now she's got to deal with all of this during that difficult time. So you might be asking me, Ralph, how can I protect or how can I prevent from burdening my family when I die? So let me give you some actionable steps. The first one, and this is the one thing that Bruce should have done with Julie. Be transparent about your finances. You got to talk to your spouse, talk to your family members and tell them the truth about what's going on. Number two, can't stress this one enough. Create a comprehensive list of all your debts and assets and keep it updated. You know, if you're a young person, maybe you don't realize that your days are numbered. You know, unfortunately, people die every day. You have a car accident, some unexpected illness. But if you're keeping that comprehensive list up to date with all your debts and assets, then the person that's handling your estate or the executor will know where to find it. One of the things we talked about was considering life insurance. As I said, generally, life insurance isn't able to be used 
you know, to pay off those debts and those creditors. So that's a great way to provide for your family. Another thing you can do is pay down your debt while you're alive. You know, this isn't a rocket science show here. It's all about living within your means and avoiding unnecessary boring. Now, I'm saying that was the case with Bruce, but think about it for a moment. If Bruce had worked on paying down his debt, he wouldn't have left Julie with that credit card debt, those personal loans. Unfortunately, in our case, Bruce owed everybody because he was hitting everybody up for money because it was kind of like playing a shell game. He was trying to rob Peter to pay Paul. And one of the things I'm also going to stress here is it's vitally important that you, con you know, have a consultation with an estate planning attorney. You've got to understand the laws in your state and create a solid plan. A lot of people don't do that. And it's frustrating to me. It's not that expensive. And you're going to put yourself in a position where your family will be prepared, at least with some, some boundaries of what they need to do. Another thing you've got to do, and I talked about this on other shows, you've got to regularly review and update your beneficiary designation. You know, if you've got life insurance, if you've got retirement accounts, make sure you've got named beneficiaries because the last thing you want to do, think about this for a second. Let's say you don't do that. And that life insurance or that retirement accounts gets dumped into your estate. Well, if you owe a lot of people, that money is going to be used to pay off those creditors. And another thing you're going to do, last one on my list here, and you're going to talk to the estate attorney about this. Maybe you want to think about setting up a trust. A trust can be used to protect certain assets from creditors. Well, let me share another example of how proper planning can make a world of difference. As you all know, my mother was diagnosed with a terminal illness back last year. It was a difficult time, but we were able to have some conversations about her finances and her final wishes. So we were able to work together to create a comprehensive list of her assets and debts. My sister and I were able to do that. My mother had already updated her will. There was clearly designated beneficiary, so that wasn't an issue. She had worked with an attorney. She set up a durable pile of attorney for financial matters. Her stuff was pretty well organized. Honestly, my sister handled most of that. But the biggest thing, the biggest sense of safety and, and, and peace of mind was that she had that advanced medical directive. And as I shared, you know, my mother was diagnosed with the, with the glioblastoma, brain tumor. The, the, she wanted the doctors to go in and operate, and they did, and it wasn't successful, unfortunately. But when the doctors came to us after that and said, hey, what do you and your sister want to do? We just relied on mom's directive and, and she passed peacefully. And when she passed, we were able to focus on celebrating her life and supporting each other in our grief. We didn't have to squabble about, you know, who's going to handle this. Now, of course, there were still financial things that needed attention. And my sister was handling those. But because mom had taken the time to put those things together, they were very straightforward and manageable. That's a stark contrast to what we experienced with our cousin, Bruce. Remember this. Addressing these issues isn't about being morbid or pessimistic. You might be thinking, Ralph, man, this is a rough talk. Man, you're talking about people dying, but it is a reality. And it's an act of love and responsibility towards your family. Think about this. You want to be responsible toward your family when you're alive. We're just going to drop the ball and not do that when you pass away. And by taking control of your finances now and planning for the future, you're going to provide them peace of mind and more importantly, security for those loved ones. Well, let me recap for a minute. As I said, debts don't simply vanish when you die. I've heard that spoken from a lot of people that say, oh, Ralph, no big deal. When I pass away, my debts go away. It doesn't work that way. And those debts can significantly impact your estate. But with proper planning, you can help to have a positive impact on your family's financial well-being. But you got to have that open communication. you got to be responsible with your financial management. And if you do those things, you can protect your loved ones from these unnecessary burdens. We don't have to see these. Well, thank you for joining me today for this important discussion. I hope you've gained some valuable insights that will help you take positive steps towards securing your family's financial future. You can do this. You might not be able to control when you pass away, but you can certainly control how things are going to play out when you do. So tomorrow I'm going to be talking about how can I keep from burdening my heirs with an inherited IRA? Yes, it sounds like death week on the Ask Ralph show, but I'm really trying to give you some positive things you can do. It's a natural follow-up to what I've talked about today, so you don't want to miss that tomorrow. Now listen, if today's episode has sparked some questions about your own financial situation, maybe it sparked some questions about estate planning, I want to encourage you to schedule a consultation with me. 
For just $150, I will work with you to create a personalized plan to improve your personal finances. Maybe that's not your issue. Maybe you need help growing your business or achieving your financial goals. I can work with you. I can help you. I want you to visit askralphpodcast.com slash store and book your session today. Let's work together to secure your financial future and create a lasting legacy for your family. Remember this. My passion is to help you achieve financial success. I want you to live out your dreams. I want you to grow in your faith. And I know together we can master your finances from that Christian perspective. So as I always say, stay financially savvy and God bless you. Thank you for joining us on the Ask Ralph podcast. And with the simple click to subscribe, we'll invite you back to our next episode. And remember, financial issues don't have to be complicated. Just ask Ralph. The information contained in this episode of Ask Ralph is based on data available as of the date of its release. Saggio Accounting Plus and Ask Ralph Media Inc. is under no obligation to update this content if changes occur. Applying this information to your specific situation requires careful consideration of all facts and circumstances, and any information provided is not to be considered as financial, tax, or legal advice. Please consult your tax advisor or attorney before acting on any material covered. 